Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm so glad that you are joining us this morning for worship. Today, our Associate Pastor for Nurture and Discipleship Care, Austin Lippert, will be leading us in worship, and we're so thankful for her contribution as she comes to us to proclaim the word today. This afternoon, we'll be having our outdoor worship service at three o'clock, and I invite you to be a part of that service as we gather together today. I will ask you to come uh, with your children if they are under the age of 12 so that they can participate in our Palm Sunday Parade, which will be filmed immediately after the service. Also at that service, we'll have available to you palm crosses for you to take home and to use at your worship center at home as we continue to prepare our hearts for Easter. During the Holy Week, we will release a virtual service on April 1st, Thursday night, that will be really a focus on the passion of Christ. And then on Easter Sunday, we will gather in our parking lot at 11 o'clock for an in-person worship. I do remind you that whenever we gather together, we wear our masks, we practice social distancing, and we practice this kind of love for one another. But I invite you to make a plan now to be a part of all of these services as we continue to worship God together. I remind you that you can go to our website, wsmethodist.org, and find many ways there to connect with the ministries of our congregation, whether it's through one of our Bible studies or small groups or our Sunday morning Sunday school classes. In many ways, we are connecting with one another, with our community, and with the world. Today, I do want to suggest that you consider making a donation to UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief is our way of engaging the community and the world in times of disaster. And certainly we have seen so much happen in Texas recently that we want to give to UMCOR to support the work of healing in that area. And now I invite you to join me as together we worship the Lord. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. How beautiful is the word of the Lord. How wise are God's commandments. Through the Lord's precepts, we gain understanding. Through the Lord's wisdom, we gain truth. The Lord is our God. We are God's people. God's word lives within us, for it is written on our hearts. Living word, great teacher, lead us and guide us. Amen. Spread, I will 
please join me for our opening prayer. Gracious Lord, you know our hearts and our need for rhythm in our lives. Show us how to unlock our hearts so that we can experience fully the transforming power of your love. Be with us in the big moments, the little moments, the in-between and uncertain moments. Reveal to us the path you have for us to travel and grant us the courage to go in the direction you would have us to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we come now to make our confession to our Lord, who is gracious and merciful and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray together. We confess that the circle of love is repeatedly broken because of our sin of exclusion. We create separate circles, the inner circle and the outer circle the circle of privilege and the circle of deprivation. We confess that the circle of love is broken whenever there is alienation, whenever there is misunderstanding, whenever there is insensitivity or a hardening of the heart. 
We confess that the circle of love is broken whenever we cannot see eye to eye, whenever we cannot link hand to hand, whenever we cannot live heart to heart and affirm our differences. Forgive us our sins as we forgive all who have sinned against us. Through God's grace, we are forgiven. By the mercy of our Creator, through the love of the Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us rejoice and be glad. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us hear together the words from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Together we give thanks to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In this passage, God is announcing a new thing. God will relate individually to people, allowing each of us to have a personal relationship with the Lord. God is making it easier for us to connect to God. Wow, think about that for a minute. God, the creator of the universe, is doing a new thing. God is willing to change in order to meet us where we are. That God loves us that much is astonishing. And to the Israelites, this message from Jeremiah gave them hope during a very, very bleak time. To understand how important this message was to the Israelites, we have to take a brief trip through the history of Israel. Now, many hundreds of years earlier, God appeared to Abraham and promised to bless him and make his children into a great nation that would bless all the families of the earth. This happened over generations, but then the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt after they fled to Egypt to escape a famine in their home country. God, using Moses as an intermediary, freed them from this bondage. And they left Egypt on the night of the first Passover, walked through the Red Sea, 
and came to the foot of Mount Sinai. At Mount Sinai, God made a covenant with them. If they would keep God's covenant, they would be God's chosen people, a priestly kingdom, a holy nation. Then God they gave them commandments and laws that would help them keep this covenant, would help them live like God wanted them to and be different from the people around them, be holy. The most famous of these laws are the Ten Commandments, but there are lots of other ones. But from the start, even at the foot of Mount Sinai, the Israelites had trouble keeping the rules, following the law. They were fallible and they broke the rules, just like we do. Sometimes they just messed up. Other times it was willful disobedience. But either way, they were not living up to the covenant. They were not living as God wanted them to. The Israelites finally made it into the promised land, but it didn't get any easier to adhere to the law when they were in the land of promise. In fact, once they were settled, some people made a big deal out of obeying every single one of the rules. However, their hearts were focused on themselves and not on God. They gave all the outward appearances of fidelity to God but their hearts were turned away. The prophet Amos tells us that God despised the feasts and offerings that these people gave because while they outwardly worshiped the Lord, they took advantage of and oppressed God's people. They were checking all the religious boxes, but they didn't love God and were just going through the motions of worshiping the Lord. They weren't keeping the covenant because they didn't let the law transform them. When Jeremiah spoke the words of this passage, the Israelites were in a horrible place. The Babylonians had overrun Jerusalem. They had torn down the walls of the city that the Israelites thought were impenetrable. They had destroyed the temple that was God's house on earth. And then they had taken the Israelites off to exile in Babylon. It was a bleak time. The Israelites were despondent. They figured God had given up on them because of all the bad things that were happening to them. They were sad and hopeless, knowing that they had gotten themselves into this situation and they had no way to get themselves out of it. Just when things were as bad as they seemed they could possibly get and all seemed lost, God spoke to them through the prophet Jeremiah. God, in effect, said, and this is my paraphrase, Hey, I see you can't keep the rules. They're beyond your ability. So instead of abandoning you, I'm going to change how we go about this relationship. A time is coming when I will make a new covenant with you. It won't be written on stone tablets like I gave you at Mount Sinai because that just isn't working. Instead, I will write my law on your hearts. We will be in relationship. Everyone will know me personally, and I will forgive all the times you've messed up and broken the rules, and I won't even remember your sins anymore. This message from God shows us God's heart. God loves us, and God is willing to go to great lengths to have a relationship with us. In fact, God was willing to become human to show us the extent of God's love for us. Jesus Christ lived a fully human life with all the problems and all the chances to break the law that we have. However, Jesus had a strong relationship with God and was able to stay fully obedient to the law. Jesus loved God and loved others and showed us how to put that love into practice. During his time on earth, he showed us how to live a life that pleases God. Jesus was willing to face the evils of this world with divine love.
and not respond in anger or seek to save himself by violent means. As Charles Swindoll says, during those 33 years on earth, Jesus was pushed and shoved, mistreated and misquoted, tortured, scourged, and nailed to a cross. He learned the lessons taught by suffering. Jesus showed us that God fully understands all of our suffering because he's been there. And he also showed us that the power of love is greater than the power of evil, hatred, and even death. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, we are quickly approaching Holy Week and Easter. Let's think about what happened at the Last Supper, because at this meal, Jesus shared with his disciples that the new covenant was taking effect. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my body. Take, eat. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So in Jesus' words, we hear an echo of what God said through Jeremiah so many years before. Here we see that Jesus came to start the new covenant that God had promised to the Israelites back when they were in exile in Babylon. With Jesus, God came to, to us in love and lived a life just like ours. People were able to see and have a relationship with the divine and learn more about God's heart and what God cares about. And that first Easter showed us that the power of love, the power of God, is greater than the power of death. By Jesus' love, we have become children of God so that we can have a personal relationship with the Lord. But there's even more to the amazing new things God is doing. Jesus promised his disciples that even when he wasn't able to be with them physically, they were, would not be alone. God would send the Holy Spirit to be with them. And this Spirit lives in us and teaches us and gives us the ability to be like Jesus. It's God in us showing us divine love and seeking to transform us with that love. It's God's law written on our hearts. As we live into the love that God has for us, we change. We are transformed. As the Spirit changes our hearts, both our inward attitudes and our outward actions will be in accordance with what God wants. So what we see is that God has gone and is still going to a lot of effort to be in a relationship with us. All we have to do is say yes. Yes, I want to be in a relationship with you. Yes, I want to be loved in a way that far exceeds any love I've ever known before. Yes, I want to be transformed. When we accept the love that God offer, offers us, we are changed. God begins to transform us into the people God created us to be, our true selves. And when we realize the infinite love that God has for us, we are freed from all those things that we tend to think are important. We are freed from trying to please people. We are free to go against the popular view. We are free to see the infinite gifts and graces of every single person we encounter. We are free to take risks and try new things because we know that God will love us no matter what. With the Spirit living in us, we will begin to see with God's eyes 
and love with God's heart and act with God's intentions. We will be the people of God doing God's work in the world. And that truly is a new thing. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, your word forms a strong foundation on which to build our lives. Like a sower, you have planted your truth and your law of love in our very souls. Watch over what you have planted and nurtured within us. Find us faithful, O God, that we may take what we have learned and grow to know you. For you are the one to whom we belong, the one to whom we pray. Amen. And now if you would join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. from the inside out into your true self. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer. Amen.